I see the sunrise, I see the bait The dice has been rolled, I know it's too late Don't take it away Don't take it away Live one's a bit different, he's saying. So the biggest thing with a live one uh, is not to hook it too deep, otherwise you'll kill it. So you hook it just through the mouth. Oh, I see, the top of it. Just the top jaw. And that stays alive forever. And uh, he can swim with his mouth open, all that kind of stuff. So, all right. Okay. So here we have the other. The Saltist 50, loaded with, I think it's 45 pound with braided stuff. This is a very crucial part, is a little bit of steel on your leader. And that, that can... Back off so I can see the length of that, will you? So he, he, he's got the stop ring, this comes with the kit. And then this is his steel leader, which is three, four foot long, all right? And then he goes to a heavy duty swivel there and then on to floor. Just be 100% sure that when you put a swivel on here, that you get, that this ring will, goes slide, over. will actually go over it. Okay, got it. It's you. very important. But if it stops there, you'll burn off. Right, so what he's going to do is going to put the slide away on. Daddy, get out. <laughs> and that's going to go along over the swivel all the way down to this stop ring. Let me see it. All right, sure. so he's now going to cast. All right. thing about these HDXs is that you can really load it and it'll send that weight flying. So what I'm doing right now I'm just making sure that that weight is set in the, is set really nice and because uh, the crucial part about sliding is your weight. So if your weight's not going to get stuck in the sand properly and you start sliding and shaking you're going to pull your weight loose and then you've wasted all that time and effort in doing it. So your weight is really important and so that you can put a, put a lot of tension on the line. Okay, and that, what I'm gonna do is get it, all the slack, try and get as much slack out of the line. As you can see, it's really buried in now. Let me go get the bait. Does the direction of your cast matter, like into the direction of the current? Okay, so what I'm doing as well is, we got a current running a little bit like that. If you can turn the camera around and have a look, I've thrown it between the white water there and the white water there. And there's a bit of a rip current going out. Mm -hmm. So I'm thrown in between there. That'll help suck this bait out. And it'll go out a lot faster. That's why it's really important. There's one or two of the spots on there. You can see that yeah. bank. Yeah, and you can see it, yeah. So that's what I'm looking for. That's very important when you look at the sliding as well, is to choose the right water. Because if you've got a shallow bank, it'll get stuck this side of the bank. And then you'll get burn, burn offs. That's a decent sized whiting. He's going to be some black tips dinner. I'll just slide it up. Yeah, so you can. Yeah. Chris is going to. Uh, Chris is going to go out and he's going to watch it go towards him. These slides are pretty tough. So I use a screwdriver in there. Right. Makes it real easy. <laughs> So with your slide, the, where your knot is, it's always going to point to where it's going. If you're going to put it like that, it's going to go up, and then as soon as the wave hits it, it'll stop. It won't go anywhere. Always got to go that way. And you just keep winding around. Here 
there it is. Make sure the beads in between these so that the slide doesn't compress. These are nice heavy duty slides. There we go. So now that's what we look at. So the slide can go out and then when the weight pushes it, it does that and pumps it back in. All right. So let's get them out there. So the action that we're doing with the rod is just a gentle, gentle back and forth movement. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then also what I'll do is I'll move, I'll walk up so you have a bit of a... So the current is coming from, from this direction, he's walking towards the current, so the current assists him in taking the bait out to the sinker. There's action. That's why you need that eight ounce sinker buried in nice and deep because he's working against it and that bait sliding its way out there as quick as a man can walk. Neon's bringing a new type of shark fishing to this area in that he uses all HDX tournament bark long rods. He believes it keeps the rods nice and high. He's using 50 wide paddle boats and doing the slide away. Any other rods? That line? Whoa. Watch Abby, Nick. You're not nice. Oh, it's a I'd be worn out by now. See why Dion's in such good shape. How do you know when the bait's there? You don't. Okay, you just do it there. Well, what I did... We did, saw it go over this bar, so right. it's in the middle of the gut. And then what I felt was there was a drag, okay. and then suddenly the boat came up. Okay. So that tells me that it's probably... It's gone gone, through the bar. It's gone through, the, through those bars. Did you get that? Yeah. So if you look at the line, also, or you won't oh, see the line. Oh, I can see the line, yeah. It's, no, it's actually you go going nice, straight. straight. Yeah, got it. So it's not got that bow in the line. Right. It's actually straight line. And that's generally a rule of thumb that it's, it'll it's still move out a little more. Okay. But that, that's pretty much it. While you're on, okay, why are you using, because you came uh, on the scene and you phoned me up and you said you had a specific request, you wanted 13 foot minimum stiff, surf rods for shark fishing, which was unheard of in this area. Now tell us why you went that way. Okay, so a lot of our rods and, and reel setup in South Africa, this is pretty much how we fish. The water structure there is a little different because we've got deeper water closer. But the reason why I went with this is instead of kayaking a bait out, it allows the, not, I wouldn't say the average angler, but the average person to get a big bait out further and have a better chance of getting better quality fish and uh, that's the reason why I wanted to go with this instead of going for something shorter and and the pulling power of these rods are phenomenal 
you know, once you set into a fish, it's got enough tip action that you're not going to hurt yourself, but it's got, once you load down on it, it is phenomenal how much power you have to reel in a decent sized fish. I mean, we've landed 10 foot tigers, and it, not on slides, but on, on uh, kayak out. But I mean, the rods handle them with ease. So does that answer your question? Yeah, that's good. I, I mean, that's an important question because most people think you've got to have a shorter, heavy grade e-glass rod. These are high modulus graphite, long rods, and you're catching sharks using them. Absolutely. You know, and with ease. You know, we're not... The one thing about a high modulite graphite rod is that once you load the rod, it pulls the fish. Um, where those e-glass rods have a lot of bend in them and it actually wears your back out. Oh, to okay. me, it wears your back out. And I don't like that. I'd rather have a rod that's more direct and have a lot of pulling power. So if you just swing up there, you will see it's got three HPXs with a tip height nearly 20 foot easy. So you've got good clearance, you know, from the weed and everything, it's as good as it gets. Thank you, Dion, for showing us that. We all Absolutely. appreciate it. Have a great day. <laughs> the dice has been rolled. I know it's too late. Don't take it away.